It's time to talk about Tekken 8, alright? So, here's the deal. I've been playing fighting games consistently here on DSP Gaming, and when I say consistently, I mean Friday Night Fights, like Friday Night's playing them every Friday night, and then usually one to two other streams of the week, if not more. I've been doing that since the release of Street Fighter 6 in June of last year. So at this point, it's been, what, nine straight months of fighting games nonstop here on the channel. And I cannot express to you enough how much I loathed those streams. They were absolutely miserable. Maybe there was something for you there if you were into Street Fighter, if you're a Street Fighter style individual. But for me, Jesus Christ, dude, those Street Fighter streams, they never ended. And he did nothing but complain the whole time. If you ask me, Street Fighter 6 couldn't go away fast enough. And the fact that he replaced it with Tekken 8 immediately is just a shame. I always talk about how he has that unique skill to make every single game more boring than it is. And fighting games are no exception because I actually like Tekken. I enjoyed Tekken 8 when I played it. But he still managed to make that game look boring as dirt. <clears throat> and, basically, with Street Fighter 6, what I saw was a really cool attitude from the viewers. A reinvigoration of interest for fighting games. Because I used to heavily play fighting games. I used to travel to tournaments. I used to be an actual, what we considered, professional level competitive Street Fighter player back in the 2000s. And I'm sure most of you are aware by now, but for those of you who weren't around during the time that he was playing Street Fighter 6 recently, the only reason that he was getting this reinvigoration of people interested in fighting games is because he cares far more about Street Fighter than he does any other fighting game. And that's simply because he's tied his identity to the game. I really don't think that I've heard a week go by where he didn't mention Street Fighter at some point. He's constantly letting everybody know that he used to play fighting games professionally back in the day, back in the 2000s. I used to play Super Turbo. He does this shit all the time. So when a new Street Fighter was coming out and he wanted to play it, people egged him on. They showed up to the streams. They talked in his chat. Because the longer he played the game, the more salt they were going to get. The longer he played the game, the more frustrated he was going to be with the fact that he isn't as good as he thinks he is. That's why I said earlier, if you're a Street Fighter enjoyer or someone who just really enjoys salt compilations, I'm sure SF6 footage from DSP was your creme de la creme. But I can only sit through so much salt before it's obnoxious, before it's grating on the ears. And that's exactly what Street Fighter 6 became, so goodbye, good riddance. But first, DSP has to tell you his entire history with the game. Now that was a long time ago, right? And I've been out of the loop of competitive play for a very long time. When Street Fighter 4 came out in 2009 and 2010, I covered it like crazy on YouTube. I made insane amounts of videos, but they were not high-level videos. It was me kind of messing around with the game, picking a character, dicking around, just learning basics, and then playing online and raging and screaming and swearing, and people found it hilariously interesting, funny. I got tons of views on those videos, and I got very prominent on YouTube for that content. And I just have to jump in and correct him real quick just to set the record straight. Because he loves to claim that after he started YouTube, he wasn't playing seriously anymore, and he would just get online and dick around and have fun. But there's still videos up on his channel of him going to tournaments, of him trying to be at these tournaments and still be in the scene. He very much cared. So don't fall for the pignosis. Always remember that even after he started YouTube, he wanted to be a Street Fighter player. He just couldn't hack it with the boys. He just wasn't good enough and that's kind of the story of his life. It was funny is the FGC hated me for it because they were trying to make professional high-level gameplay videos that weren't getting nearly as much attention as me just dicking around with this game and looking like an asshole, but people liked that. You understand? Maybe there was some of that. Let's be fair to DSP. Let's say some of those people were jealous that DSP was getting more views on his dick around footage than they were on their legitimately good footage. But a lot of that resentment was probably from before as well because DSP was a known character in the Street Fighter community, a known character that nobody liked because he, quite frankly, acted like an asshole. I also think that it's pretty fair that if you're in a community and you want your community to be taken more seriously, you want to draw more people into your community, into your hobby so that they they can enjoy themselves and you can continue to grow the hobby that you love. Having this absolute clown going on YouTube and giving your entire community a bad name is something that would irritate you. It is something that would piss you off and make you resent him. People could be going online, going to YouTube and trying to find Street Fighter footage after the game came out because maybe they're interested in, you know, checking out the scene and getting into the game. And DSP is the first guy they see. He's going to be the face of Street Fighter on YouTube. Not exactly the best first impression. And I know a lot 
lot of those guys back in the day in the community really did care about their community. So let's not sit here and pretend like they were just jealous because they weren't getting the views that you were getting. Sure, maybe for some of them, absolutely. But it's not that cut and dry and saying it like it is is just being dishonest. So it was weird because my content was always very different from the content that the FGC was putting out. Now over the years, my attitude towards fighting games changed. When Street Fighter V came out, I hated it. I thought it was a terrible game, so I barely played it. You can play semantics all you want, DSP, but I just looked at how much Street Fighter V footage you actually have on your channel. And for all of my audio styles, I have a lot of them scrolling by on screen right now. But whatever your definition of barely played it is, it's completely different to mine. I did casually play other fighting games, such as the Injustice series, the Mortal Kombat series, um, Tekken, and other games over the years, but I never really honed in and focused on a fighting game in any heavy capacity because I never really found that urge or that spark with any modern game like I had back in the day with Classic Street Fighter. In fact, I just found myself going back to the well of Classic Street Fighter over and over and over. Whenever, whether it was <clears throat> Capcom Classics Collection, the Capcom Fighting Collection, any collection of these classics of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, and or other various games that they would bundle in with it, I would play that way, way more than actual modern fighting games, right? But that's only because you were unwilling to learn the new mechanics that were in these fighting games. You were unwilling to learn all of the minutia that comes with a fighting game, all of the frames, all of the characters, all of their moves, how you counter things. And that holds true to this day. But that's the reason he kept going back to these older games is because nobody was playing them, at least no real competition. And he didn't have to learn anything new. Because of that, my fighting game audience disappeared. There used to be no exaggeration, thousands of people who would come out whenever I played a fighting game to watch me play it, and because I basically stopped being interested so much in fighting games, besides the classics, I lost that audience. Who would have thought that if you don't make a certain style of content, that the people who are coming to watch that certain style of content don't continue to come back to your channel? If you constantly watch a channel that talks about Warhammer lore, for example, and they quit doing Warhammer lore and instead start to just play chess on stream every day, you'd probably just quit visiting the channel. They can find a new audience, one that even enjoys chess, maybe. And that's exactly what happened to DSP. People who did, for some reason, actually enjoy watching him play fighting games didn't want to see these old ass fighting games. They wanted to see the new ones that's what they were supposed to be coming around for so when he quit playing them they quit showing up it's crazy how youtube works like that sometimes okay so last year when i started playing street fighter 6 it was a unique experience because it was an opportunity for me to play a game at launch to learn it along with everybody else on the internet right to try to get you know good at street fighter again for the first time in my life but how is that any different than your experience with Street Fighter V? Because I know you bought it on release. I know you played it on release. I know that you were trying to get good at the exact same time that everybody else was trying to get good at about the time of release. And it worked. People showed up. They were engaged. They were supportive. They were tracking my wins and losses. They were helping me with gameplay elements every single time that I played. They were incredibly supportive of those streams, which was amazing to have people come out and support fighting games for the first time in so many years because I was actually putting effort into it, right? And I can say this. I had a great time doing it, although it became very stressful once you get to a certain level at a fighting game, okay? What happens is now, instead of just learning basics and fundamentals, now you have to learn a more advanced level of knowledge of the game. There are so many times in a DSP pre-stream where I have to wonder who he thinks that he's talking to. Who doesn't understand that as you rank up in a game, as you face higher and higher competition, that you have to learn more about the game, that you have to understand more, you have to utilize more of the mechanics, and that you just generally have to play better. Who doesn't understand that? Who does he think that he needs to break this down for? And in Street Fighter Six, for that, it was the top tier characters all play exactly the same. They're all rushdown characters. Every one of them gets in your face with crazy speed, hits you with these mix-ups and or attempting to fool you into blocking the wrong way and then they get a giant combo and then they push you to the corner and now that's game over, okay? Especially for the the, the bottom half of the, the whole tier listing of the game, they really can't hang against the, maybe the top six, seven characters. They just get bodied by them in this regard, okay? So what would happen is I would get to a certain ranking with a character and now it was like now it's like an uphill battle because you have to really fight against these people who all play exactly the same same pattern same gameplay ad nauseum and it gets boring and repetitive and grindy 
And I'll say this to my dying breath, if it's the same pattern, if they're constantly doing the same exact moves with the same exact characters, you should be able to counteract it. You should be able to read what they're going to do. Basically read their inputs and do a counter. If it's really as simple as you're saying it is, if it's as easy to do as you're saying that it is, you have no excuses other than just being dog shit at the game, which is the reality, obviously. And that mentality really carries into any game. Because while there might be tiers of characters in Street Fighter and there might be tiers of weapons in other games, the reality is, if if you are just skilled enough, if you are just really him, you're the guy, you could just beat it. You could just do the thing. All of the other information and stats be damned. Needless to say though, that DSP is not him. He is not the guy. You know he will not be doing it to him snipe. But once you pass that level and you get to master, now it, it was better, right? It was fun. And basically what happened was, I got so many characters to master, right? I had, first it was uh, Blanca, then it was E Honda, then it was Lily, then it was Dalsim, and then I was on the path there with Zangief as well. Like, I was actually doing well with Zangief. Like, wow, if I just keep playing, I'm going to hit Master with him, right? That was pretty sneaky, DSP, but I caught it. I caught out the fact that you did not mention the second time that you got Blanca to Master because you decided to buy the game an additional time for a different console. Like I said, pretty sneaky, but I caught you. So really, there was nothing left to prove in the game except... If I wanted to keep playing through Master, and again, it felt like another grind. You hit Master, everyone's doing the same shit again. It's like, oh my god. But the thing is, with Street Fighter VI, a couple key factors here. Factor number one, people were along for that ride with me and very supportive of it. They didn't mind if I was playing Street Fighter VI four or five times a week because they understood I needed that much time investment to get good at the game, right? I was doing daytime streams, nighttime streams. I was doing all kinds of streams of Street Fighter VI along that five, six month period that I was playing the heck out of it. In addition, um, I have fundamental knowledge of Street Fighter 6 because I know Street Fighter in and out from back in the day being a pro player um, and I started at a level higher than most people. Most people jumping into Street Fighter 6 they're at entry level. I was above entry level. I was like mid-level to start. So for me, there was less of a le learning jump to get to a more competitive level. For everyone else, it was a bigger climb, okay? So to translate all of that from pig to English, he basically just acknowledged the fact that the only reason he was able to get to the level that he did in Street Fighter 6 is because he had prior knowledge about Street Fighter, that he started off on better footing than everybody else did when they started. But when he got to those higher ranks, he still couldn't make the cut. He still couldn't hang. And that only became more and more apparent the later we got into the life cycle of Street Fighter 6. Because just like with every fighting game, it comes out, a lot of people buy it, they play it for the first few weeks, first month even, and then all of the casuals drop off. All of the new people that you were stomping in ranked mode just kind of quit playing because they don't like the game that much. And all that's left is people that do like the game. And typically people who do like the game that much are going to continue to play and continue to get better. And that's where DSP has his hang up every single time. Because once other people have a basic understanding of the game, DSP just again doesn't make the cut. He's not better than the basic understanding so for me it's kind of a natural thing to get better at that game and do as well as i did now here's the thing after seven months of it i got tired of it i was burnt out i wasn't having fun with it anymore because either i pick a character who you know a character i don't know how to use it and i'm trying to climb and learn with them and it's like such a grind because again everyone's playing exactly the same online the meta had been discovered and it's just like do i really want to do that if i play the characters who hit master it's the same shit, the same repetitive people online doing the same spammed patterns of rushdown. That's all it is, rushdown patterns over and over. It's like no one else is doing anything. It's just the same five, six characters dominating online and there's nothing you can really do about it. So the journey up to master is a grind and the journey after master is a grind because everybody's just doing the same thing. Well, DSP, if that's how you feel about the game, if you think that both ends of the master ranks suck, either getting there or being there, I just don't think that you enjoy the game. And you can say it's because people discovered the meta and they're all doing the same thing, but the meta is part of the game. Up until it changes, obviously. But it is still part of the game nonetheless. You don't get to sit up here and say that you like Call of Duty, but you hate all of the overpowered guns, you hate the movement mechanics, you hate all of the perks that they introduce introduced and you don't like skill-based matchmaking. Well, at that point, you don't like Call of Duty then, which I don't. And for anybody who's confused at this point, what any of this has to do with Tekken 8 because it's in the title and that's what he started with, you know, let's talk about Tekken 8. I really don't have any idea. I have no idea why we got this huge ass Street Fighter 6 segment, completely unrelated to Tekken 8 if you ask me. Um, and basically it would cause me a lot of stress. It would cause me a lot of, you know, 
uh, adrenaline rush, you know, sweating my balls off trying to play the fucking game and getting angry, punching my joystick, screaming and everything. And after seven months of it, I had enough. I was like, I'm going to give you this a break, all right? And what we're going to do, we're going to play Tekken. Tekken's coming out at the end of January, and I want to try a different fighting game, and I'm curious how it will go because I didn't know how it was going to go at all. I thought, you know, Tekken's a whole other animal. It doesn't play like Street Fighter at all. It's a completely different engine. Um, you know, fundamentals will help you, but I've almost never played Tekken competitively, you know? Uh, it's been a long-ass time since I put any real effort into learning Tekken as a competitive game. I think it's really funny that in the last video I did where we talked about Tekken, the one where he was bragging about hitting purple ranks, he explicitly said that he has no competitive nature or background in Tekken. He's not really that familiar with the game at all. But now that we're sitting here talking about Tekken 8 again, we're willing to acknowledge that we have at least a little bit of competitive experience when it comes to Tekken. Even though it was years ago, at least a little bit, and we haven't tried in quite a while to be competitively viable in Tekken, where, like I said, previously he was trying to play off that he had none. Very robust and meaningful eyes, DSP, keep him up. But I have to acknowledge the fact that he addressed himself that he was having an adrenaline rush, sweating profusely, and punching his joystick in rage when playing Street Fighter 6. So what rational human being would think that it's a good idea to go immediately into a different fighter? If you're getting that flustered and that upset about a fighting game, DSP, I don't think that fighting games are really for you. It kind Kind of sounds like you need to be playing games that are more your speed. I get being competitive, I really do. But I think that any actual adult style human being can acknowledge when they're being unnecessarily upset about something that doesn't matter, something that is considered a hobby, and realize that it's not worth getting upset about and that they look like a total asshole in front of the entire internet. But like I said, that would require him to be a normal adult style human being. And at this point, we all know that DSP is just LARPing as an adult because he doesn't understand the very basic ideas of account ability, responsibility, or respect. And therefore, unlike starting at mid-level like I did with Street Fighter VI, I was kind of starting down at the bottom like everybody else, really. So it came out, and I said, let's try it out. And, you know, we played through all the various modes of the game, which were good. The story mode is good. The arcade mode is good. It's good to have all that offline content. But, of course, the meat and potatoes of the game is playing online. Now, what I can tell you is this, and this is really odd. Overall, the online connections of Tekken are good, okay? I don't think they're as good as Street Fighter VI when it comes to latency. And what I mean by that is when you're playing Street Fighter VI online, you regularly will get lower ping matches, 20 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds. Those are really good pings, okay? You're going to have a pretty good experience. But what I actually found, and this is a tricky thing, when you're playing Street Fighter VI versus Tekken online, Street Fighter VI would significantly drop way more of your inputs than Tekken 8 would. So even though the Tekken connections might have been a little bit laggier and slower, my moves would come out 99% of the time. Like, no exaggeration, it's rare when I'm playing Tekken 8 and you hear me complaining, oh, my move is repeatedly not coming out. But I used to say that all the time playing Street Fighter 6. And you might say, well, I wonder why. Well, the real reason is because DSP has different cope strategies depending on the game. Because you might not know this, but not all games are made the same. So of course, if you're going to cope and seethe about why you're losing, you have to come up with a different reason per game. In Street Fighter VI, it's because his moves aren't coming out. That's the real problem. He knows that he's doing them correctly, obviously. He's a Street Fighter professional. It's just that the game is dropping his moves, which means that if his moves would have came out, he would have won. But being that he's not a Tekken professional, he's not a Tekken 8 connoisseur at all, he's not nearly as familiar with any of the mechanics, including the moves, so he wouldn't know whether he's dropping them or not. Instead, one of the major differences as far as DSP is concerned between Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8 is that the character roster for Tekken 8 is a lot larger. So instead, his go-to cope is that he just doesn't have an encyclopedia of knowledge about all of the other characters and all of their other moves. But I'm definitely jumping ahead because I know that we're going to address this. We pretty much have to. There's a very good reason, because this is the, the drawback of rollback netcode. This is why rollback netcode fails, but the FGC either isn't smart enough or just doesn't want to recognize this fact. Here's the problem with rollback netcode, okay? When you have a lower ping and supposedly a better connection, how exactly do you think it is that the rollback netcode accounts for that? All right? You know what they say? It's kind of like when... A government comes up with this awesome new plan where they're going to throw a bunch of money at something and everyone says, oh, it's a great idea. But you're like, yeah, but where's the money coming from? The taxpayers, right? Someone's got to pay to make that happen. 
Yeah, I don't think that anybody has ever said that about rollback netcode. No, DSP, nobody has said that. It is kind of a funny bit to say, you know what they say, and then say something that nobody has ever said in their life. That's a good bit. I'm going to remember that. So when you've got code, netcode, how do you get the connection to have 15 millisecond ping and have a better connection that's more responsive? Drop the inputs. That's how it does it. That's actually how rollback netcode does it. As you approach a better connection, all right, lower ping, supposedly supposed to be more responsive, it'll drop more inputs. We've already gone over this a million times, so I'll say it for the millionth and first time. That's not how rollback netcode works. If you want to know why that's not how rollback netcode works, there's a bunch of YouTube videos online that you could go watch. That's not this one. You just have to know that DSP is entirely wrong and ignorant about the entire subject simply because he has a vendetta against the people who made the rollback netcode to begin with. So in Street Fighter VI, when you're playing online, you got a 15 millisecond connection. All of a sudden, someone will do rush down. You can't block it. Why can't I block it? Because it dropped your input. That's how it got you a 15 millisecond connection. It just ignores half the things you put. Of course, it's I'm exaggerating. It's not half. Maybe it'll ignore 4% of your inputs. But still, in a competitive match, that's a lot. And you'll notice it. I can't block on reaction. My move, I swear I input it. Where the fuck is it? Why didn't it come out? Because you got a 15 millisecond connection and the game drops more of your inputs. Okay? When you're playing Tekken, all right, you don't have 15 millisecond connections. You probably on average have like any 40 to 60 millisecond connection, I would think. And shit, when you're on wireless, forget it. That thing just goes root, root, root half the time. But you'll almost never drop a move. Almost never. Because it doesn't sacrifice your inputs for the sake of giving you a better connection. It just gives you the connection that you're going to get if you get all your inputs. Do you see the difference? Sure, DSP, whatever. I've hit that point in the rollback netcode dropped inputs conversation that I just don't give a shit anymore. You're wrong, you're ignorant, and you're never going to be convinced otherwise. So cope and see and cope some more. So I can definitely tell you guys this, okay? 100%. I've had a more satisfactory time in the month and a half that I've played Tekken 8 online than I did playing Street Fighter 6 for seven months. Because half the time I played Street Fighter 6, my shit dropped. But playing Tekken, it almost never drops. It might have a laggier connection that's very annoying that it's going root, 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 and stuttering, but at least my moves come out. I'd rather have that. I'm going to be honest with you. I would rather have the laggier connection and have all of my moves come out than have a, a game that looks smooth, but half my inputs drop. And that's the illusion of rollback netcode. Rollback netcode looks better, but actually plays worse. Awesome, cool, great, fantastic. So Tekken 8 plays better than Street Fighter 6. DSP said so. He's acknowledging this fact right now, right here in front of everybody. It kind of sounds like we're loving Tekken 8 and we're going to continue to play it. Very cool, very robust. I mean, obviously that's not what's going to wind up happening. This is the day after the rage quit, the final rage quit. But it seems like all of the things that we've had to say about Tekken 8 were fairly positive. In fact, a glowing review coming from DSP saying that it's better than Street Fighter 6, a game that he played almost nonstop for seven months and that's what i've been trying to tell you guys since the launch of street fighter 6 and no one wants to listen everyone yells at me that i'm the old man screaming at a cloud and i don't understand because the fgc knows better the fgc doesn't know better all right they don't they're either ignorant or they just don't care they want their matches to look good on their stream so people will watch and click and give money no, DSP, that doesn't make any sense, though. First off, the FGC would know so much more than you, beings that they play the game uh, nonstop all of the time, and it's pretty much the only games that they care about. So they have a vested interest in this. They need these games to be good. They need them to play well and consistently for them to be good at them. And I don't know where he gets the idea that fans of something, people who have a vested interest in things like a video game or a movie series or a TV show, just don't care about them. That's not how this shit works. Let me tell you, the people that are fans of something care so much more than you do. They're the first people to contact the devs or make a stink online, saying that the game is unacceptable and not satisfactory in any way because it doesn't meet their unbelievably high standards that they've set for the game. And it doesn't matter what the game looks like because he says, oh, they only care that the game looks good so that people come to their streams and give them money. When fighting games aren't about the way that they look, they're entirely based off of gameplay. They're entirely based off of pure execution and knowledge of the game. So 
so if the game is not playing consistently, if they cannot execute the moves that they need to execute, then it's not going to work for them and needs to be changed. They don't care about the quality of the match. The quality of the match in Tekken 8 has been far better for me than all the time I play Street Fighter 6, and that's the bottom line, and that's the truth. So apparently the quality of the matches in Tekken 8 are just better than SF6, simply because DSP um, said so, and it's based entirely off of his subjective opinion and experience. Sound good? Sounds good to me. And by the way, Justin Wong agrees? All right. So you want the ultimate best online experience in a fighting game? Tekken 8 gives you a better one than Street Fighter 6. That's the truth. All right? That's just me being honest. All right? Okay. Now, continuing on. So what happened in Tekken 8 is thus. I started playing with my characters who I knew from previous Tekken games, like Paul and King. Now, I didn't know high-level strategies with them, but I just kind of flubbed around, and I did pretty good. All right? Um, and then as I continued to play, I started studying online. I started studying videos. And at first, there were zero videos. I was like, oh, shit, this is a problem because um, I can't learn. But then all of a sudden, a flood of videos hit the internet and I started learning. It was a problem that there weren't already tutorial videos online for you, DSP? Have you ever just considered maybe, I don't know, playing in the training mode to figure out your combos and your high level execution style moves? Maybe even just trying to figure out something live and in the flesh for the first time? From what I've been told, audiences actually kind of like some of that stuff because it's robust and interesting to see, especially on day one. But I don't know you guys, there's not tutorials on YouTube, there's no way I could possibly learn anything about this game. Dude acts like it's completely impossible to just learn a game by doing it, by experiencing the mechanics. But that would actually explain a lot about his other gameplay. In every other game, when he can't figure things out, it's because he didn't watch tutorials on YouTube. Completely disregard all of the tutorials in the game and all of the handholding that he's been receiving through chat, dude. He didn't watch YouTube videos. How is he supposed to know? So I tried a character like June, who hadn't been competitive in Tekken in a very long time, and it was, she's a great character in it, and having a great time. And then, um, then I started using Yoshimitsu. And that's really when it got, for me, serious. Because Yoshimitsu has a great move set, a great tool set. He, he's like a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of a situation. Um, I like how varied he can play. And he has little answers for all these different situations in the game. Um, and I had a great time learning him and using him. I've now used Yoshimitsu for over a month. I don't know if you guys realize. It's been a solid month I've used him. It was like the first two, three weeks I played Tekken, I did variety. And then I stopped doing the variety. And I just focused on Yoshimitsu to get good with him. Nice burp in the middle of your sentence, you absolute goddamn heathen. I'm sure everyone's super appreciative of that. But I always think that it's ironic and kind of hilarious that Mr. Variety is the guy who's constantly telling you that he can't play a variety of characters in these fighting games, dude. He has to hone in on only one character so that every time he plays the game, you only get to see that one character again and again and um again. And I understand. He says that it's to get good with the character. He can't focus on a bunch of different characters because they all play differently and he cannot get good good with a bunch at one time. I absolutely get that, but I think that DSP just doesn't understand that his main priority should not be getting good with these characters and instead being entertaining because he's a content creator. He is a streamer. He's supposed to be an entertainer. If he's not part of the FGC, he has no intent of ever being part of the FGC again, then he doesn't need to worry about being good with these characters and instead needs to focus on making an entertaining stream. And if he's not going to do that, the least he could do is carry that same mentality over to his streams where he would focus on one game at a time instead of playing three different games for three months at a time. Because I'm getting real tired of seeing Baldur's Gate 3, Like a Dragon, and Final Fantasy Rebirth on loop. Now, I climbed up the ranks with Yoshimitsu. Okay, I did. I went from bottom of the barrel to all the way up to his highest purple ranking, which is really high. One more, if you get to blue, it's considered like master level in Street Fighter 6. So I'm just like below a ranking where it would say, hey, you're pretty good at tech. So if we're at the rank directly before saying you're pretty good at Tekken, that makes you okay at Tekken? That makes you an average player at best? Is that something that we were really trying to take pride in? We were going to sit here and gloat about our purple ranks when apparently that equates to being completely okay? Entirely adequate? That doesn't exactly sound like something that needs to be praised. It it, it kind of sounds like a participation trophy to me. Okay. um, And that's pretty amazing because, again... I don't play Tekken competitively. This is me learning from the ground up, learning fundamentals, learning more advanced strategies and combos and things like that. Um, and basically, here's the deal. I love playing Tekken, and I really enjoyed it for this month and a half, but my audience is not with me on this. Unlike Street Fighter VI, where when I was playing Street Fighter VI, 
the whole crowd here was with me. People were rooting for me. People were tracking my matches. We were counting the first 1,000 wins, right? We were tracking, oh, when will you hit this rank with this character and this and that? And it was fun. It was really fun. But people haven't been doing that at all in Tekken. No one, honestly, is really caring that much in Tekken. And like we talked about at the beginning of the video, this is entirely because DSP just doesn't care about Tekken like he does Street Fighter. His genuine passion and interest for Street Fighter is the reason that people cared so much about his Street Fighter gameplay. Whether that be for LARPing reasons or because they're genuine fans, I'll never know, but neither does DSP. So once again, all of his problems really just stem from a lack of passion, that he's not actually interested in any of the games that he's playing, including Tekken 8. And that was only made more obvious Obvious by how quickly he decided to drop Tekken 8 after having a couple of bad streams. I mean, how many salty sessions did we get of Street Fighter 6 before we decided to finally call it quits? For Tekken 8, it was two. Granted, the last one was absolutely egregious. The dude lost 30 matches in a row. But still, two salt sessions compared to the numerous that we got in Street Fighter 6? Um, and I don't know if that's a result of the fact that there's just fighting game burnout because I played Street Fighter 6 for seven months and then started Tekken when it came out in January. Or if it's just the game, that basically um, people are more into Street Fighter than Tekken with me because I'm known as being a Street Fighter player for a long time and I have that notoriety. I, I don't know, honestly. Well, if you don't know DSP, you could ask. You could ask for some of that glorious feedback that you are always asking for so that you could get a genuine understanding of why people are and aren't showing up for certain content. You could very easily make a community post and ask people which one they preferred and why they preferred it over the other one. You might even get some honest answers that would clarify the entire situation for you. But no, of course not. The only thing that we ask for feedback on is very specific shit that isn't actually going to matter at all. Do you guys want me to play Star Wars Battlefront? all day Friday or just the night stream or maybe the day stream like the same 200 dents aren't going to show up regardless of what you play how do my burp sound into the microphone you guys I've got these new filters on leave me some comments and tell me how my burp sound into the mic now shit like that so real quick before we get off the topic I have to address Hadley in DSP's chat for the second video in a row I believe big ups Hadley and Hadley says that Tekken had more viewers last night than Final Fantasy 7 and like a dragon and if you know anything about those like a dragon streams you know they are completely dead and nobody is talking or there at all but of course that's completely irrelevant because like a dragon is a game that dsp does genuinely enjoy i think it's hard to tell but that's the only justification that i could come up with considering that the support for the game is minimal to non-existent and nobody is showing up but that's just been a fact is that tekken has not gotten people that invested in it you don't see that level of excitement or investment when i play the game at all right and because of that i've cut back on streams like when i was playing street fighter 6 like i said i was playing probably four times a week minimum so you're talking eight to twelve hours of gameplay right get uh basically <clears throat> excuse me with tekken i've had to cut down to like two streams a week if that and that's equivalent of four to five hours of gameplay so you're talking 10 to 12 versus four to five in the same amount of time it's not a lot and my problem is I'm not playing enough Tekken to learn the more advanced things I need to learn to succeed at the level that I've now reached. When I hit that purple rank, basically here's what's happened, okay? Tekken has now hit the point where everyone who I face literally has found an abusable, repeatable, spammable, repetitive strategy that they use over and over. There's no intelligent thought behind it. They just realize if I keep doing this move, if I keep doing this particular hit string, generally it hits a lot. And if I get that one hit, usually it leads to then a giant combo. Then every once in a while, mix up and throw out a different move or throw, wash, rinse, repeat, that's their gameplay. So he's ran into the exact same problem that he did in Street Fighter 6. He's not as good as he thinks that he is. He cannot hang out in the rank that he's achieved. And he's constantly falling for the same moves, the same mix-ups, the same combos. And instead of actually analyzing his gameplay and getting better at the game and maybe even playing offline because he likes the game so much, he's instead just decided to complain and act as though it's the game's fault because the game exists in a manner, I guess. That's a basic tool set. That's not an intelligent tool set for fighting games. That's just, I know basics about a character and they just seem to work online. So I just keep doing it ad nauseum. And then by the way, if these players ever face anything different, a moment of adversity, oh my God, a sweep, what's that? I have to block low. They can't even do it. 
they don't have the fundamentals to fight people at that level. It's the same thing as Street Fighter VI. These rushdown players, they mindlessly pick a top tier. Mindlessly rush down, rush down, rush down, rush down, rush down. And the moment you interrupt their rush down, they're like, eh? And then you just dominate them and crush them because they don't know what's going on because their rush down failed. They're a one-trick pony, basically, is the point I'm making, okay? Then again, this should be super simple for you, DSP. You should be king of the mountain. If you know that they're not going to be able to deal with whatever you throw at them because they don't know the basics of the game, then you should be beating them hand over fist. You're actually giving yourself no excuse. And I think that's why he goes for the combo cope when it comes to these fighting games. In Street Fighter 6, it was a combination of people spamming and using rushdown while he was also dropping inputs. So he gets to address the real problem, which is that he's unable to actually respond to these people doing the same move over and over again while simultaneously covering his ass on the other end by saying it's because his inputs dropped as well. The difference is, in Street Fighter VI, I played so much of it, I learned how to beat the one-trick ponies. You see? I said, okay, with Jury, I know what she can do here and here, and with this character, I can do this to get past that offense. With this character, I do this to get past that offense. Did you really though? Because every time I tuned into a Street Fighter 6 stream, it was you once again complaining about rushdown characters, and very seldomly did you ever seem to have an answer for it. To be as fair as possible, maybe I was just tuning in at the wrong times. But it seemed a little too consistent to just be poor timing on my end. In Tekken, I'm only playing the game twice a week. I'm not playing it enough to have the character knowledge to stop the one-trick pony spammers. In addition, there's 32 characters in Tekken 8. In Street Fighter 6, there's, what, half that? So I need to have double the amount of knowledge in Tekken 8 to even be able to hang with these people. And what happened last night was essentially, for me, the straw that broke the camel's back, okay? And there it is, the second half to the excuse for Tekken 8. It's not dropped inputs this time. He's already clarified that he doesn't drop inputs in Tekken 8. Instead, it's the entire roster of characters. So due to the sheer amount of characters that are in the game, there's no possible way that he could remember all of the moves for all of the characters, you guys. Come on, that's absurd. He only plays the game a couple times a week. But this is why I said earlier that if he's not interested in being in the FGC, if he's not gonna wind up going to tournaments or actually caring about his rank, then he needs to focus less on being good and more on entertainment. He needs to be playing with different characters. He needs to be trying fun challenges that are going to keep his audience entertained. Or here's an idea, get them engaged DSP. Why don't you do a Tekken 8 community night before you throw it in the bin? Maybe that'll reinvigorate your audience. Maybe some of them who had no interest in the game prior will buy the game simply to play with you and find out that they actually enjoy it and look more into it and look forward to your streams. Or worst case scenario, you could just use it as an excuse to continue to play a game that you claim that you enjoy. Because if that were me, if I was in that scenario and I wanted to continue to play a game but people didn't want to see me play it, I would try and incorporate them enough that I would be able to continue to play it at least every once in a while. Not that I'm a plot and scheme and scam and son of a bitch like DSP, but sometimes putting something into a different context, giving it a different objective, a different goal, is enough to make people interested. And with the character creator being as good as it is in Tekken games, I'm surprised that he hasn't capitalized on community nights before because I'm sure that there's somebody in his audience that really wants to show off their creative character on his stream. I know that I'm just wasting my breath here because he has to protect his family, dude. What if someone shows up and their player name is Cat Got Black? Whatever would we do then? Speaking of what we're going to do then, I'm actually going to have to cut this clip in half. So unfortunately, this is going to have to be a two-part or it's going to be way too long. But we're not going to cut it before we take a look at a couple comments from the last video. So big ups all of my members. I appreciate you. The Chody Taint says, hello, door. Obviously a reference to one of the greatest DSP bits of all time where he talked to the door instead of his viewers. Because the door listens better, of course. 713. Chat. Hey, DSP, can you play Pizza Tower? DSP. I can't, dude. No one's asking me. Make it make sense. And in a similar vein, John Doe, FG4XE. Dense. Can you please play these games on PC? DSP. No. Later. DSP. My viewers do not want me to play games on PC. It's always going to be shocking to me how much DSP asks for feedback and then refuses to take any of it, even on simple and small things such as playing video games on a different platform. And the entire situation is only made better by those huge rants that we get where he says the exact opposite of the truth. A lie, if you will. But that's it for today's video. Shout out everybody who watched it, especially if you made it this far. Hopefully I'll catch all of you guys in the next video, but until then, make sure that you check out other detractor content and dive deeper into that. Snore tags. I got nothing good whatsoever out of being here late last night playing Tekken 8. Instead, all it did was piss me off, piss off the viewers, piss off my wife, and piss everyone was upset, right? Everyone. I'm not going to bust my fucking balls anymore. So anyway, um, that's that.